These are the liturgical readings for Sunday, the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, September 6th, uh, 2015. I'm going to read these readings um, for this video uh, in a slightly different order than what we find at the Mass. Um, I think it will become clear why I am reading them in this order. <clears throat> the uh, prophet Isaiah, of course, paints a picture of the future. And Jesus, uh, in the Gospel, um, makes present that prophecy of Isaiah. In other words, that prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled at the time of Jesus, 2,000 years ago. And the new order established by Jesus' death and resurrection is the continuation of that present moment that Jesus embodied in the event of the gospel. And so the reading from the letter of James basically speaks of how we are to live in that present moment. So let's listen to them with that in mind and uh, then listen to the homily, which as of my reading of this I have not yet given, but which uh, also will be, God willing, recorded. So our first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I don't want to do this at the Mass. It's not appropriate, but for our own study and reflection purposes, it is good to give the scripture reference. It's from Isaiah, uh, chapter 35, verses 4 to 7a. In other words, the second half of verse 7 is omitted. The reading ends in the middle of verse 7. Thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the dumb will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert, and rivers in the step. The burning sands will become pools, and the thirsty ground springs of water. And now the Holy Gospel. The Gospel is from the um, Gospel according to Mark. It's chapter 7, verses 31 to 37. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done 
all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. And now the reading from the letter of James. This is the beginning of the second chapter of James, verses 1 to 5. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in. And you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, oh, sit here, please. While you say to the poor one, stand there. Or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs. Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? So now that we have heard the word, let us now reflect on how this word can touch us here and now. 